So welcome back to our third video. In this video, Siri will be talking a lot about the science behind bee venom. So all of the different compounds in bee venom, you know, all of the major aspects of bee venom that are really why, you know, we've decided in a lot of research um, supports the idea that bee venom is really helpful in eradicating chronic Lyme. Yeah, and we really are just gonna dive into this but make it, you know, hopefully simplified while still staying true to the science. Um, and then again, we'll have documents attached below if you are more of a visual learner along with walking through a visual right now. Yeah, so we would actually recommend that after you watch this or while you watch this, you kind of keep up the research document because it really goes through with sources cited to these research papers, what exactly bee venom is, what it's composed by, and what it can actually be used by. And the specific components in bee venom have been tested and well vetted, and bee venom overall has also been researched for a variety of conditions. So these papers are not only interesting and educational, but they're also summarized in kind of these one-line blurbs that we put together so that they'd be just really easy to digest. Mm -hmm. But kind of diving into it, most of bee venom is actually just water, but one of the most powerful components of bee venom is melatonin. Um, it is made up of 26 amino acids, which you might remember from a previous video. Um, amino acids are some of the building blocks of life. And what is really important about melatonin is that it can literally puncture and destroy cells. And it's why uh, when you're stung by a bee, it hurts so bad. It, you can mostly associate it with the pain, but really it's doing a lot behind the scenes. And melatonin has also been most studied inside of an organism's body and outside of an organism's body and these are called in vitro and in vivo and these are all defined in the document but why they're important is because you want to make sure in a scientific experiment related to someone's someone's health that you know what you're testing is not only working on like a petri dish but it's also yeah. working in someone's body because you can get different results each time and so melatonin has been most studied um, both inside the body and outside the body uh, moving on, one of the next really important components of bee venom is called phospholipase A2. Phospholipase A2 is also incredibly destructive. And why it's specifically important is because it joins in with melatonin and creates this sort of new substance that especially has the ability to cleave and destroy cells. Mm -hmm. And this component too has been studied to have a lot of really anti-parasitic properties but in vitro, so in a petri dish and not inside the human body. Um, there are a few other components, but we're kind of gonna jump to one of, again, the most important components is a peptide, um, which again, you can look up the definition for in our little handy dandy research document, but it is the mast cell degranulating peptide. And MCD peptide um, has a mast cell degranulating effect, which involves the release of histamine. And again, we'll go through and kind of define these for you, what a mast cell is, like what degranulation means, and we'll have this written out just so this isn't confusing, because right now we're just kind of focusing on higher level points of what is in bee venom. But um, what's interesting about this peptide is that it can both act in a pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory way, just based on how much histamine is in your body and um, it can both, you know, suppress and activate uh, inflammation, which is really yeah. interesting yeah. Uh, for bee venom. And it can, you know, um, start regulating any mast cell dysfunction you have from just mast cell activation syndrome or mastocystitis. And so kind of jumping in, there have been a few hallmark studies on why uh, bee venom is so effective for treating Lyme disease, but most of them have to do with uh, melatonin, which is the component that we talked about uh, that really can puncture cells, it's been the most studied. One study kind of figured out two findings. So that finding is that melatonin attacks spirochetes, persisters, and biofilms. If you have chronic Lyme, you know that there are multiple forms of the bacteria, which is what makes it really hard to treat. But melatonin gets to all of them. Um, and additionally, melatonin hinders the spirochete motility. So if you've ever seen a picture of a spirochete, it kind of looks like a, a corkscrew. And how it kind of works is it's able to kind of swim through 
because of its physiology, um, which is kind of just outside of the scope of this video, but is kind of interesting to look into if you're curious and it might kind of creep you out too, but <laughs> melatonin hinders its motility, so it can't move as well. And another really potent study found that with melatonin, um, it attacks rogue mast cells and the insides of those mast cells leak out. So as you'll learn, or as you might already know, when you have mast cell activation syndrome, that can actually be triggered by having Lyme disease. And so you end up having these mast cells, which are again, white cells that are degranulating for, for almost no reason, right? They're triggered by things in your environment that normally shouldn't trigger them. And so melatonin is able to, again, attack them and kind of regulate them by getting rid of these rogue ones. And so this is all possible because cells that are unhealthy have irregular cell walls. And what that means is that bacteria, toxins, viruses, parasites, they all have irregular cell walls. And what the research will show you is that the way that melatonin affects these irregular cell walls is through puncturing them and letting those insides leak out and affecting them in such a way that you know, it, that no other sort of uh, treatment is really able to. And in most emerging studies, we're learning that antibiotics actually create more persistent and biofilm um, Lyme bacteria, when in fact, melatonin can address all of it. And on top of that, it's important to note that there hasn't been a lot of specific research on phospholipase A2 on Lyme disease. Um, and in fact, one of the studies found that it had almost no kind of effect when it came on spirochetes, persisters, and biofilms. But it's interesting to keep in mind that this like insane substance that's formed when melatonin and PLA2 get together can actually like go even harder. So the takeaway points here is that because melatonin has this ability to puncture cells that have irregular cell walls or basically all the bad cells like bacteria, toxins, parasites, that's how it's able to really uh, target Lyme bacteria and also start regulating your mast cells, which are a really big part of why Lyme can be so persistent, Lyme and its co-infections. So yeah, that's kind of a really yeah. long spiel about why you know bee venom is effective for Lyme. And some of this may or may not make the most sense, which is mm. why it's really important that you take a look at this documentation that we really prepared in a way that's really easy to understand. And we, again, cited all our sources. So if you are a little bit curious like, like us, mm. you can go take a look. Yeah, dive a little deeper, but... You know, and again, like this is living on the site where it is, so that way you can come back and reference. And these things didn't make the most sense to us, you know, or maybe we didn't know all the research when we started either. But you know, we as you learn and can go back, like Siri said, and like dive deeper on the research, look at the document, look at this video. You know, mm -hmm. if you're visual, and it really all starts to come together. And you know, like Siri said, just to kind of summarize, right, like. Bee venom has so many amazing different compounds and melatonin is like just one of the ones that has been the most studied, you know, has yeah. like is one of the biggest powerhouses in it, but that's not to say that it's the only one that does things, which is why, you know, we touched on some of these others as well, but yeah. And just to add some of the questions mm -hmm. that we get involve like, why can't you use powdered bee venom or dried yes. bee venom as opposed to live bee venom? And it's because like bee venom is composed of such sensitive peptides that when they're exposed to oxygen, they actually degrade in quality, yeah. which is why like a fresh sting is actually much better than um, dried powder. Like vials, yeah. But in some studies, like they have used powdered melatonin and it is able to be synth synthesized artificially in the lab. And with powdered melatonin is how they got some of these results, which really kind of makes me curious as to the effect yeah. of live venom in further eradicating and even serving, you know, prophylactically against future reinfection. We, you know, really, again, appreciate you watching this yeah. video in our series. Yeah, and hope that it helped. You know, I mean, Siri spent a lot of time and a lot of research, like condensing this all. And so while it feels like a lot, like we're saying, you know, this is a resource for you to use, not just a one and done video. So hopefully it helps. That is a, you know, long but short, overview of the science behind bee venom so mm -hmm. thanks for watching thank you <laughs> see ya